The Lion and the Mouse. Once upon a time, in a dense and sprawling jungle, there lived a mighty lion named Leo. Leo was revered by all the animals in the jungle for his strength and power. However, he was often aloof and didn't bother to befriend the smaller creatures around him. One day, tired from hunting all morning, Leo lay asleep in the forest, under a large shady tree, his great head resting on his paws. Some mice that lived at the foot of the tree scrambled over the sleeping lion to return to their home. But just as the last timid little mouse, Mia, was crawling over him, and in her fright and haste to get away, she accidentally ran across the lion's nose. The lion woke up with a roar. Roused from his nap, Leo was startled and annoyed. He laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny creature, trapping her and aiming to kill her. You woke me up, he roared. The mouse was frightened. She apologized to the lion for disturbing him, and trembling, but with a hint of bravery in her voice, she squeaked, Oh, mighty Leo, please spare my life. I'm just a small and insignificant mouse. If you let me go, I promise I'll be forever grateful to you. And someday, I will surely repay you. The lion was amused by the thought that a mouse could ever help him. You are funny. How could a mouse help a lion? Curious and intrigued, Leo chuckled at the thought of a tiny mouse ever being able to help him, the king of the jungle. But he pitied the little poor mouse and generously decided to release her. He lifted his paw and finally set the mouse free. I'll let you go, just because you made me laugh. Some time passed, and one day, while stalking his prey in the forest, Leo accidentally stepped on a trap. A net made of thick ropes captured the lion and pulled him up into a tree. He was caught in the toils of a hunter's net. The lion struggled to free himself, but could not. He filled the forest with his angry roaring. Several animals ran to help the lion. They struggled to break him free, but only ended up making him entangled further and further. It seemed like there was no escape. Leo's mighty roars rumbled through the forest and echoed through the jungle as he became upset and afraid. Mia, the same mouse he had spared, heard Leo's distress calls and knew the voice. Remembering the lion's kindness, the mouse didn't hesitate and ran quickly to the lion's aid. She sprinted to the tree to find Leo struggling in the net, surrounded by different animals trying in vain to help him. Let me pass! <laughs> 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 if we couldn't help, how will you be able to do so, small little thing? Mia ignored all the comments and climbed up to the trap. With her sharp little mouse teeth, she gnawed at the great ropes of the net that bound Leo. Tirelessly working, she continued chewing the thick ropes, bit by bit, until Leo was finally free. You laughed when I said I would repay you. Now you see that even a mouse can help a lion. Leo was astonished and profoundly grateful to the little mouse who had once been at his mercy. He realized that kindness and help could come from the most unexpected places and the smallest of creatures. From that day forward, Leo and Mia formed an unlikely friendship and the lion learned that might wasn't the only source of strength. It was obvious for both of them now that no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. They understood the value of compassion and friendship, regardless of someone's size or appearance. Good deeds are always rewarded. The Wolf and the Seven Little Goats Once upon a time, in a distant peaceful land, a mother goat and her seven adorable children lived happily in a cozy cottage near the forest, where laughter and love filled the air. One day, the mother goat needed to fetch vegetables from town. 
Before leaving, she warned her kids about the big bad wolf lurking nearby. Dear children, I must go to town. Remember, never open the door to strangers and beware of the big bad wolf. He won't spare you if he comes. The seven little kids responded harmonically. Yes, yes mother. mother. With a warm hug, the mother goat departed. Meanwhile, the hungry wolf prowled around the cottage, drawn by the scent of the little goats. He approached and knocked on the door. Open up, my darlings. Mother is back. He growled in a rough voice, but the seven little goats refused to open the door, recognizing the wolf's deceit. You are not our mother. Your voice is harsh, while hers is soft and sweet. Disheartened, the wolf searched for a solution. He spotted a house with helium balloons nearby, and an idea struck him. Inhaling helium, he returned to the cottage and knocked again. Open the door, my sweet ones. Mother has returned. This time, the youngest goat checked under the door and remained unconvinced. You're still not our mommy. Your feet are dark, while hers are white. Determined to deceive, the wolf covered his dark paws with white flour from a nearby bakery. With his feet now white, he returned to the cottage and tried once more. Open up, my darlings. Mummy is finally home, and she has gifts for each one of you. The wolf mimicked the mother goat's soft voice. The wary kids requested proof. Show, Show us, us your feet. feet. Seeing the white feet, they believed the wolf was their mother and opened the door eagerly. But their joy turned to fear as they faced the hungry wolf, ready to devour them with a menacing grin. Didn't your mother warn you about strangers? Now you'll be my supper. The terrified goat scattered inside the house, seeking hiding spots. One hid in the laundry basket, another in the oven, one under the bed, while another tried to hide in a pot. Well, the wolf found them and captured six of the kids inside a big bag. But the youngest, cleverly hiding in the clock case, managed to escape. Planning a grim dinner, the wolf left the house carrying the big heavy bag and headed into the forest. By the river, he lay beneath a tree to rest a bit and soon fell asleep with the bag next to him. Meanwhile, the mother goat returned to find her cottage in chaos. Oh no! What happened here? Where are my sweet little kids? Horrified, she searched for her missing children and heard a faint noise coming from the clock. Upon opening it, the scared baby goat leapt into her arms. Determined to rescue her other kids, the mother goat went out in pursuit to find the wolf. She spotted him sleeping beneath a tree, with the bag of captured goats beside him. She quickly released her little ones and devised a plan to end the wolf's threat. Fetch some big stones, my sweethearts. We'll fill the wolf's bag while he sleeps, she instructed. The little goats obeyed filling the bag with heavy stones. As the sun set, they returned home safely, grateful for their escape and their unbreakable bond. The next day, the thirsty wolf woke up and rushed to the river, carrying the heavy bag. But as he leaned in to drink, the weight of the stones pulled him into the water, never to be seen or heard from again. Peace returned to the forest, thanks to the bravery and cleverness of the mother goat and her little kids. The Elephant and the Ant In the heart of a dense forest, there lived a majestic elephant who strutted through the trees with an air of superiority. His large size and immense strength made him believe he was the ruler of the jungle and he took pleasure in tormenting the smaller creatures around him. One day, as he paraded through the forest, he encountered a mama bird with her hatchlings in their nest perched on a branch. Hey, mama bird, yelled out the elephant. Bow down to me, you and your hatchlings, as I am the mightiest and most majestic creature of all time. But the mama bird, unimpressed with his arrogance, ignored him and continued to care for her three little babies. 
Enraged by the bird's audacity, the elephant used his trunk to shake the tree, hoping to scare the bird into submission. However, the mama bird and her babies escaped unharmed, leaving the elephant fuming with frustration. As the elephant continued, he came across a rabbit happily munching on carrots. Wanting to assert his superiority, the elephant decided to torment the rabbit. Hey, tiny creature! Give me your carrots and bow down to me, as I am your superior! yelled the arrogant elephant. But the rabbit, enjoying his meal, ignored him and continued eating. This infuriated the elephant, who snatched the carrots from the rabbit's grasp and devoured them in one bite. The rabbit, angered by the theft, ran off in search of more carrots. One day, while drinking water from the river, he encountered a hard-working ant collecting food for its colony. Why are you collecting so much food, you tiny ant? <laughs> Where will all this fit in you? laughed the elephant. The ant replied calmly, It's going to rain soon, and I need to prepare for it. With a sly and arrogant smile, the elephant sprayed water from his trunk, drenching the ant and ruining its hard-earned food. Undeterred by the elephant's bullying, the ant vowed to teach him a lesson. The next day, while the elephant was napping by the river bank, the determined ant crept into his trunk and began to bite him relentlessly. Startled awake by the sudden pain, the elephant thrashed about, crying out for help as the persistent ant continued its assault. Ow, ow, ow! Someone help me! cried the elephant, but the ant ignored his pleas and preserved the bite. Please, please stop! I'm in so much pain! continued the elephant. Eventually, the ant victoriously emerged from the trunk, leaving the elephant humbled and remorseful for his actions. The immense animal was surprised that the cause of his pain was nothing but the tiny ant. See, this pain is similar to the one you caused to everyone in the forest, said the little ant. I hurt you physically, while you hurt us morally. Both have the same power, though the moral pain effect will last longer, while your physical pain will fade shortly. So please, always be aware that we, little creatures, are also able to hurt you, giant one, but we just choose not to. Realizing the gravity of his wrong behavior, the elephant apologized to the ant, promising never to trouble it or any other creature in the forest again. From that day forward, he used his strength to protect and assist his fellow animals, earning their respect and admiration. And so, in the vast tapestry of the forest, the unlikely friendship between an elephant and an ant blossomed, teaching all who witnessed it that true strength lies not in domination or intimidation, but in kindness and empathy.